Hey humans, welcome back to otro videito más. Today we're gonna be developing color film using a lap box and CS41 from Cinestill. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so this is definitely not sounding good. I think I messed this up already. All right, so as you can see down here, I have all the different containers labeled properly. I think this is a little bit overkill, but everything is labeled for a certain purpose. You got the developer, the Blix, the stabilizer, and just the regular water. We're gonna start off really quick, just so you know, the instructions and how long to do each step for will be in the description below. So you can go check that out if all you want is that information. But I'm basically gonna take you through my first time developing color film. We're gonna use this to control the temperature of the water, which should be 102 degrees. Let's fill this up. All right, I just filled it up to the six meter line-ish. So yeah, again, if you're wondering how to mix these chemicals and put them all together so you can start this video, then go watch the previous one. The link is in the description below, but it's basically using this, the Cinestill Quart Concentrate Kit, the CS41, and this is for uh, color negatives. Get the liquid ones. They have a powder version, but I don't like the powder version. I like the liquid one better. I'm gonna put this water container on the towel. That way the heat doesn't dissipate, which I guess technically doesn't matter, but it, it, it's better for temperature control, even though we're gonna use this, but it's just, this is better, okay? Now, first things first, we're gonna put this in. All right, so now the set temperature is 102, um, and the temperature that this water is right now is 121, 22 degrees, it keeps climbing. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring a little bit of uh, cold water. I'm gonna use the water label container to get a little bit of cold water so I can even this out a little bit faster. Okay, let's see how much this changes. Yeah, I don't wanna go too crazy because we do have to put these bottles in. And we're gonna put the developer, which in my case is the red cap, right in there. As you can see, it'll rise a little bit. Now, let's see, I might have to take some water out. Okay, there it goes. It is at the max. <laughs> so I might take out a little bit of water actually. Okay, so we got enough water out. It's still at 120 degrees. So let's put a few ice cubes. All right, so I got a few ice cubes in here. That was unnecessarily messy. The film did not get wet. Okay, it's coming down pretty quickly. 116, 116, 115. Okay, okay, getting there, we're getting there. 114. But the Cine still temperature control system is on right now. I'm pretty sure you can hear it right now. I'm gonna go ahead and add some voice isolation here in the Vinci Resolve. Now you shouldn't be able to hear it. So I have the temperature set at 102. Actually, I'm gonna go a little bit higher. Let's go to 103 just to as things get transferred in and out. So the nice thing about this is that it just keeps the water circulating and it'll keep it at the desired temperature. Now, once these two are up to temperature, then you're good. You can keep developing rolls as, as, as much as you want. And I have two rolls right here that I need to develop. Take your thermometer here so you can test the temperature of the actual chemicals. We're gonna start with the lab box because, well, we gotta load in the film first. So let's do that. But definitely important to know how to load your film into this lab box because if you do it wrong, then, well, it'll be an issue. <laughs> but we're gonna remove as much of the tape as possible so no light comes in. So be careful, make sure no light slips in. So first we're gonna take out the backing paper. So we're gonna load this in. I'm gonna take the start of it, put it through the back. We're gonna put this down. So after loading, you gotta make sure that the exposed, where it says exposed, not the exposed side, but what it's where it says exposed is facing upwards. So you're gonna take this and pass it through the top slit right here, close the tension bar, and then we are gonna go ahead and close this. Make sure it's in the open position right here, which is a triangle, the open position and we're gonna start pulling. We're basically gonna keep going. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fast. Okay, so now that I see the three arrows and the number one, we're gonna go ahead and rip this out. Now we're gonna switch this to close. There it is, no light should get in. So now we can open the top. Boop, top is open. We're gonna open up the tension bar, remove 
the spool from the inside and we're gonna remove this tape that's inside here. That way we can separate the two. Okay. All right, removing the tape from the film. Try to pull out as little as possible from this film because then you might end up exposing to light. Now we're gonna take this clamp right here, clamp it at the end, and we're gonna clamp it as much in the middle as possible. And then we're gonna close the tension bar. Perfect. And then now we're gonna close the lab box right here. Boop. We're gonna open this up. Now it's on the open. Now we're gonna start spooling it all the way. Sounds, sounds pretty gnarly. All right, so I don't have any more tension right here. So the entire film is inside. Now you don't wanna open this at all. This is a no-no, we're, we're done opening this top. We're gonna start off with the developer and we're gonna go through the steps. So let's move this to the side a little bit, which I guess I should have done before. That way you can see a little bit better. We're starting off with the developer. So I'm using this 500 milliliter beaker to pour in 500 milliliters of developer because that's how much we're gonna pour in here to, to develop this film. And I have this because I, well, I use this to mix, but after we're done with this, we're gonna pour this into here um, and then deal with it. Let's start by measuring the temperature of the developer first. I'm gonna open up the developer. So right now it says the water is at 104 degrees. So I'm assuming the developer inside is gonna be about 104 degrees as well. But let's take a thermometer here, as you can see right there. We're gonna stick this in. It's actually 102.6, which is actually pretty good for what we want. It's fluctuating between 102, 103, uh, which is kinda where we want it. I'm gonna pull this out and wipe it down. So as we transfer the developer from the developer to the beaker to here, it will it should go down to 102, so I'm not super worried. So. I do have the instructions of how long I need to do each step for. And I also have an app here, which I'll screen record for you so you can see it as well. That'll basically let me know when to do what. But we're basically gonna start the timer once I start pouring in the developer and we're gonna go through the steps. Right, let's pour 500 milliliters of developer. All right, we got 500. I'm gonna close this down. Now it's floating, which is not good, which is why, Jesus Christ, why you should be using this. Since I'm only gonna develop one film for this video, I'm gonna take this out for now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. This is chaos, guys. <laughs> trying to trying to do the, this is chaos. So I'm gonna start this timer as soon as I start pouring. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to do this as steadily as possible. Bear with me. All right, we're gonna start timer. We're gonna wanna agitate for the first 10 seconds. Can I pour this in 10 seconds? This really does take skills. I'm definitely taking longer than 10 seconds to pour this in. Ah! Come on, you got it, you got it, you got it. Oh my goodness. All right, geez, all the developer is in. It's not leaking, so we're gonna we're gonna agitate for four cranks. One, two, three, and four. So every 30 seconds. Pow, 30, technically 30 seconds. One, two, three, four. Now we wait for this timer to go down to zero. And up top you'll see how long it, it how long it's left. So this is very nice. I'll link in the description down below the app so you guys can download it and use it. It's free, super simple, super useful. All right, again, four cranks. One, two, three, four. Okay, okay, we're waiting. All right, you ready? One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna get this ready, but after we're done, we're gonna pour it in there. I'm gonna turn it around so you can see how I crank it. <laughs> Almost there, almost there, and go. One, two, three, four. Just gotta be patient, you just gotta be patient. You just gotta, just gotta, you gotta be patient. Three, two, one. One, two, three, four. 
So now that that's done, we're gonna pause the Blix one. So we're gonna pour this out into the container using the spout section. We're gonna pour this out so it has been poured out. I'm gonna wipe this down because there is stuff down there. And now we're gonna go with the Blix. So the Blix is right here. It should be at temperature, but we're gonna test it out anyways, obviously. Now I did wipe this down, but I'm gonna take another one of these, a new one, and wipe it down so we don't get any cross contamination. Put this in so we are at 102.4, which I'm okay with because like I said, as we transfer it from one to the other, it should go down to 102 where we want it. We're gonna take the Blix beaker and pour that in there 500 milliliters all right we got 500 milliliters i'm gonna close this up put it aside all right this is off so for the blakes it's gonna be a total of eight minutes i do have the timer set here it's gonna be four cranks every 30 seconds um so it'll be about 16 cycles and the first 10 seconds you want to agitate constantly so i'm gonna turn this around so i can do it um i turned this off because i'm only gonna develop one of the films time to start on the blakes this one's a little trickier but we will give it a go okay i don't like that Okay, so this is definitely not sounding good. I think I messed this up already. It sounds pretty rough in there. I'm trying to pour this as fast as I can. Started sounding a little scratchy, so I'm not super sure. Okay, that's why I was spinning it to the wrong side. What an idiot. Okay, so definitely keep that in mind. It's uh, clockwise. You gotta spin it clockwise, not counterclockwise. Hopefully I didn't just destroy this film in there and it's developing evenly, but, and I just did a bunch of cranks Unnecessary. Guys, take your time. Uh, if you don't have to record your process, you're probably gonna do a lot better because you're not stressed out about time. Uh, now we got 30 seconds down. We're gonna start cranking again. Now there was four cranks. I'm gonna start putting this stuff aside so we can get the blicks going after we're done with the timer. We gotta rotate again. One, two, three, four. So once we're done with the blicks, we're gonna pour it in here and then we're gonna go ahead with the wash. Now for the wash, we're just gonna fill and empty the tank seven times, seven times. That's, that's, that's what we're gonna do. It's feeling pretty smooth right now and in there, so I think it should be fine, but hey, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see once I pull this out what's gonna happen. So yeah, these are a lot of cycles for the blicks, so just take your time, relax, don't be like me. So now we have done all our 16 cycles. So we're gonna go ahead and dump this out into the Blix container here. All right, so the Blix is out. I'm gonna go rinse this out seven times. You're gonna follow me through my Ray-Ban Meta glasses. So let's go do that. Make sure the temperature of the water is not too hot. Kind of want it room temperature. And then last one, number seven. All right, so we're done rinsing this off with water and we're gonna do the stabilizer, which the stabilizer needs to be at like 70 degrees, 75 degrees. And that's what it is in this apartment right now. I need 500 milliliters of stabilizer. I'm gonna be using this 500 milliliters, but let's pour in 500 milliliters. All right, so we got the stabilizer. We're gonna go ahead and pour this in while we agitate. First 15 seconds, you gotta agitate continuously. But you also gotta pour this in all the way in those 15 seconds. Race against time. As I'm doing it more and more, I'm getting better techniques. So it's in there, stabilizer. Um, we got 13 seconds left. Yeah, we're gonna dump this out and then this should be good to go. Let's see what the damage is. Okay, the minute has passed. Let's pour this out. Try not to make a splash. All right, so all the stabilizer is out. There's a few things I want to do before we open this up. I wanna pour all of the stuff into the containers. So one thing I said in my last video is that instead of pouring these back into the original containers, at least for the developer and the Blix, I wanna put them in their separate containers 
that says used and see how it'll develop and if I can reuse the chemicals more. I'm just trying stuff out because I'm sure somebody else has the same question. So I'm gonna pour in the developer and the Blix into their respective containers. So we got developer and developer. You can see they're both developer. So we're gonna take the developer and we're gonna pour it in the new one, okay. Yeah, sorry, I ran out of battery on the meta glasses, so yeah. Okay, developer is gonna be my red. So that's that's there. We're gonna go for the Blix now. Get the Blix funnel. Let's pour this Blix in there. Close with the blue. So we got these two that we're gonna keep. One thing you wanna do is trying to get as much air out of it as possible. So let's do that with all three, starting with the stabilizer. Just down as much as we can. We definitely, ooh! I went too far. Now let's go with the developer. So the closer the liquid is to the top, the better because less oxygen. So now I'm gonna take one of my markers and I'm basically gonna put one and one, basically saying I have used it once and one. So that way I know how many times I have used each chemical. These are all in there, good to go. So now we're gonna take the lab box and see the damage. I'm gonna open this up because it's time. Oh God, I, yeah, uh, ugh. it's a little crankly in there. It's a little crankly in there. That's not good. Uh, we're gonna dry this off. I'm gonna open this up a little bit, take this out. Let's take, let's take this crank out so we can take the roll of film out. Okay, so we got the roll of film. Set up a little bit. Uh, so let's, yeah, I definitely messed it up ever so slightly. Like at the end, it's like crumbled up and I kind of tore it right there at the bottom. So. But it's okay because we'll learn. So I'm gonna clip this in at the bottom and we're gonna unravel this. Yeah, I definitely, oh man. Guys, I have absolutely, unequivocally, basically 100% destroyed this roll. <laughs> Holy shit. Should I even post this video? I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's wipe this down. The squeegee. All right, would I consider this video a fail? Uh, no, because you just learn a little bit of how not to do shit. But look at that. Oh, God, that looks terrible. You can see it through the light. <gasps> so compared this one, all pretty and nice, to this one, all messed up. <laughs> So this was my actual first one. This was the black and white I did. And this was my second one. So I guess practice doesn't always make you better. <laughs> but being cautious is the thing to do because I definitely cranked it the other way, which I shouldn't have. And then everything just went to shit a little bit. I mean, I auto-corrected it, but as you see, I only didn't mess up just a little bit of the film and it's still kind of messed up. Anyways. I'll try to flatten this out. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do that. Anyways, I'm gonna try to salvage this somehow because I still want the pictures from in there. Yeah, um, yeah, um, damn. But this roll is a little bit more important than the one I just did. And so I'll obviously take my time and do it a little bit nicer next time. But there'll be a few videos on developing color film because I'm gonna be doing it quite a bit because, well, I have a ton I have a ton of uh, color film. So if you like this, Vault Tech, huh? Film, 120 millimeter, you yeah, know, huh, huh, huh? This is pretty cool, it's pretty cool, right? Made this myself, thank you very much. You can, there's a hole at the bottom, you can push it out. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice, uh, 3D printed, you know? Fun stuff, but yeah, that was a that was a ride. I'm sorry, everyone, that the film got destroyed, but that's that's another point to just bear in mind that you kind of have to be careful. This lap box makes it really easy, but you can also fuck it up. Sorry if I wasted your time. Hopefully, you learned something. Thanks for watching. <laughs> that's out of books, you know.